Shalom and good day to everybody out there. I'm Adele. I'm Jacob's other half. Sometimes I say better half, but not always the case. <laughs> um, uh, as he said before, the reason for the channel is just to get truth out there. When we first came into truth, it was hard to find information because it was everywhere in little bits. And today we find it is everywhere, masses of it, and not everything is sound. Um, Jacob is the teacher. I'm not. I'm an author, hairdresser by trade, and mother most of the time. It's a 24-7, 365 jobs, which I love. You might hear strange noises in the background. It's our cats playing. We've got four of them. Um, you might hear the rooster, Kipper. And then there's a chicken, and her name is Piglet. Yes, they all have very strange names. Uh, we have a ferret named Little Bear. The mother of the three girls, Kit Kat, Licorice, and Oreo. And the ginger cat we have is Tola. Um, they're everywhere. They make a noise. Currently, we, there's a bird flu outbreak in the UK, and um, that's why the chickens are inside. So we kind of have them as live wall art at the moment. That's the only way I'm getting away with it. Um, the cages are hanging in the lounge room on the wall. Um, my daughter's heart would break if anything happens to the chickens, and trying to be the best mum in the world is hard at times, so chickens are inside, me trying to score a couple of points. Um, my story, born in South Africa, 1975. Um, South Africa was quite different to what it is today. I grew up during apartheid. Um, as a child, I did not realize that there was any discrimination. As you do when you grow up and you become aware of your surroundings. When I was around six or seven years old, I remember sitting on my favorite step, reading my dad's New Testament. It was a Bible, silver edges around, and it was blue. Blue is my favorite color, so it was a magnet to me. I was drawn to this New Testament like there was no tomorrow. Um, I used to sit on my favorite step, paging through these super thin pages, the smell of it, it, just thinking of it takes me right back to that moment I used to sit there. And I would read, not being able to read, I would read. And in the New Testament, little Adele would be sitting there, reading about Noah and Adam and Eve, and Moses getting the tablets and the plagues and I would also read about the little baby that was born to save, to save man and other days I would walk in the garden singing to everything that moved that JC loved them and he made them and at 16 my parents got divorced and I blamed the Creator I said if you love me how can you do this? How can you hurt me like this? Not understanding that it wasn't him that was hurting me, but the choices my parents made. Living in the world, we are exposed to the devil 24-7. And demonic influences that play havoc in our lives. And unless we are in truth and have a relationship with the Saviour, you will never realise that the devil is actually the one controlling you, pushing the buttons, pulling the strings. So I went off the rails. I refused to believe, never denied he was there. I just wasn't going to talk to him. And that went on for a couple of years that I refused to pray. I wouldn't, my dad would pray for food and while my dad was praying, because I lived with my dad, not my mum, I would be thinking other things. I would go to church on a Sunday because it's required of you. And I'd sit there, and that hour was the longest hour ever. At 18, 
I finished Sunday school and I became a Sunday school teacher. I know the irony. Didn't want to believe, but it's expected of you to be part of the church, to be active in the church, to do something in the church, which I did. But every moment was pulling teeth. After school, um, I had a couple of odd jobs, trying to find my feet, discovering who I was, what I want to do, what I want to become. I was never one of those people who knew from the word go, I want to be this or that. Some people have their lives planned out. I still often say, when I'm all grown up, um, so where was I? Yes, I met Jacob. And uh, after eight months, we got married. We didn't know each other very long. But for us, that's worked. We are now 20 years on. Things are going strong. We're more in love with each other than we've ever been before. But back then, Jacob was an Adam and churchgoer. Every Sunday, he'd get ready to go to church, and I'd kick and screaming. I'd think of all sorts of excuses not to go. I'd clean the house. I would bath the dogs. I, any and every excuse in the book. And the times I'd go, oh, dreary. In 2001, we became parents, and that's when things in South Africa kind of changed. I mean, Mandela did an awesome job. But unfortunately, after his term ended, the people that followed in his footsteps weren't as considerate to all the people living in South Africa. And one day, while out shopping um, with our daughter at that time, there were certain things happening that we never thought would affect us. And this particular day, um, my daughter was almost taken from me while shopping. And that was it. I went home um, and I told Jacob what happened and we both felt that South Africa was no longer our home and we made our way to the UK. Coming here, we had to divide our money by 15 and coming from where we were, we were down on the ladder again, starting from scratch, not knowing anybody. Things were much different. I remember shopping one day and the lady behind the counter said, Oh, it's five quid. I'm thinking, I, don't know. I looked at my wallet. I looked at Jacob and said, Do you have any quids? I've only got pounds. That's how uneducated about the UK we were. So, um, But when you're down on your knees and you're in the bottom of a pit, there's only one way up. And that's looking up at the light. And we know who our light is. So, back on my knees. Because I knew he was there. I didn't want to talk to him. I really tried refusing him. But I kind of needed something. We were alone on Dartmoor. Prince and Jacob was working away during the week. He only came home on the weekend. He'd come home on a Friday evening. And leave on a Sunday afternoon to do training for his new job. So... It was just me and our daughter, and Dartmoor, though beautiful, and I loved staying there. Sometimes the Moor ponies would come up to the house, and we would feed them carrots. I was very alone. I saw snow for the first time. I had a snowball fight with my daughter. It was brilliant, but alone. I needed to reach out. Like I said, if you're in the bottom of the pit, and you're looking up, you only see light. So, on my knees I went, asking, oh, sorry, asking forgiveness for not wanting to talk to him. And that's when my relationship started changing. We moved eventually from Dartmoor because <laughs> coming from South Africa and living in Dartmoor, there's kind of weather extremes like you won't believe. And, um,. <laughs> So uh, we moved to Bridgewater, where we bought our house. We bought a two-bedroom house, and uh, while we were moving, we found out we were pregnant with our second child, our son. So, there we are, a family of four in a two-bedroom house. And we moved again to South Wales. And uh, church didn't seem so bad anymore. 
we found a Pentecostal church and the first Sunday in the Pentecostal church coming from Dutch Reformed was quite uh, scary. A man stood up and he started speaking and I jabbed Jacob in the ropes and said I'm not going to survive sitting here listening to people speaking Welsh. And another man stood up and Jacob put me in the ropes. That one thinks it's Judy. <laughs> After the service, we went to go speak to the pastor. Because if you have a question, you go to the person who's most educated to teach you. In that case, the pastor's wife. And uh, they explained that one man was speaking in tongue and another man was prophesying. Oh, did that get weird for a couple of minutes? Um, we never even knew about the gifts of the Spirit. A few years later, we were born again in the Christian church. And uh, one day, Abba told us our roots were dying. So we thought, okay, time to move from this church to another. Uh, excuse me, just a, a little bit of coffee to go with this whole lot of you. Jacob's an awesome coffee maker. He's, he's the, the coffee king in the house. Um, so, roots were dying, yes. We left that particular church. Found another church. But the pastor was in the middle of a divorce. Now, when you read scripture, there are certain things that Abba tells us. And, oh, there's Keeper. He say hi. He heard the dogs outside. Oh yeah, we've got two dogs too. Um, and getting a divorce, trying to teach a flock, doesn't seem to gel so nicely with scripture. And to say the least, we didn't stay there long. Um, it was a young church, there's a lot of disrespect from the teenagers and the almost adults eating hamburgers and eating crisps while they're being worshipped and praised and speaking to our, our most set-apart father, it doesn't go together. So we move church again, thinking, you know, we've got to find where we can grow. Our roots need to be fed. Otherwise, we, we, we die, as Abba said. So um, we found another church. Things went well. Um, I became part of the worship team. I was head of Sunday school, organized the um, education for the children because we had two kids. And my philosophy, Jacob's as well, is our kids should have the benefit of our schooling. Not everybody has to go through the school of hard knocks. As a parent, my kids should take off where I stop and not have to make the same mistakes I did. I know their choices will be theirs and because I've been there I know how to handle the situation once they've chosen and maybe not taken my advice but I'll be there because I know what it feels like to come out the other side so I'll have the tools to deal with it. That's how Abba teaches us through experiences but our kids don't have to suffer the same way to learn the things we now know. So anyway, Sunday school that was my, my basis for that as well trying to, to get the kids on par um, and not just the little Sunday school stories we get to do over and over but a little bit more of our Father and our Saviour to get a relationship with them. And then while busy planning the Christmas meal oh back up Sorry. somewhere in there um, I decided to study Christian ministry Sitting with all my Bible translations, going through them, I noticed that there were differences. And I'd be on the phone to Jacob. Lavi, did you know? In the end, Lavi would say, yes, love, what's up? And then I'd go, did you know that? No, 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 in this one, no, 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 in this one, no, no, no. They would be different. Some would even have verses missing. How can it be? We all read the same scriptures and there's verses missing. And that got Jacob very, very worried. And he started looking into that aspect of things as why, if we have one saviour, 
do we have so many denominations? Why do we have so many translations if there's one word? We found out that having different translations means that if you write your own translation, it has to be 25% different to the previous one. So what do you change? What do you leave out? What do you add in? Forward, forward, forward. So, busy planning the Christmas meal. And um, we found out about Constantine changing the way of the Nazarim and creating Christianity. There we were finding out all the paganism surrounding our father and our saviour and how the devil snuck in and corrupted these sacred texts. Well, we were praying throughout once we found out about the scripture translations and Abba just took us by the scruff of our neck and picked us up and um, he showed us all these things that we were clinging to. Christmas, the birth of our Saviour, we celebrated every year. Bringing our kids up sitting under the Christmas tree, looking for their presents, losing the meaning in the end. I would often sit outside the front with my children while they were playing in the street, and as kids walked past, they'd ask us questions because we kind of stuck out like a sore thumb being Christians anyway, because we were strict. And I also volunteered in a school and talking to the kids Christmas wasn't about the Saviour anymore. Even on Facebook, people say, yeah, but the JC thing, that's history. Now Christmas is about presents. And how much money you spend on your children. And how many gifts you give them. I remember when we started speaking to um, the pastor's wife and things like that. I said, yeah, but you are, you are robbing your children of joy. Not giving them Christmas presents, not celebrating birthdays. And I said, now, you might get to see me more or not, but I have a lot of idealisms. And um, what I said is, when they were saying that I'm robbing my children of these wonderful experiences, after studying what the tree meant, and the baubles, and the tinsels, and the gifts, and the bowing down into this furnace lap of M-O-L-E-K, yeah. um, the meaning behind it, and how sad it is that we can be so blinded. Then I said, I remember saying that you are gift wrapping your child and sending them to hell because that's what you're doing you're letting them bow down before a tree which Abba told us not to he says do not take a tree do not cut it down do not adorn it do not bring it into your house and what do we do? oh look how pretty my tree is so that was my ignorance at that point and stepping out from Christianity and having scriptures unfolded in front of us was the most amazing thing. Discovering that his name is in JC or G-O-D or L-O-R-D. We were calling out to Greek gods. Not the creator of the universe. Not the savior of mankind who died such a terrible way. Beaten for our iniquities. So yeah, coming out of, of Christianity was hard. But you know, nothing the world can put on your shoulders is worth losing the connection with him. Sometimes you wonder, when I look at our kids, they are in school, public school, they face swearing kids and rude kids and lewd kids and cruel kids um, 
Our kids are well behaved, disciplined, well mannered, and Torah obedient. Um, oh, I'm on 20 minutes. I said I wasn't going to do this very long. Um, <laughs> this is supposed to be short little segments. Uh, I do apologize for speaking so long, but that's me. Um, hopefully this will be good enough, first time. And I won't have to redo it. <laughs> but the boss has the final say, so... I'm hoping that each and every one that comes here gets the gift from our brother that they desire. Knowledge, truth, wisdom and understanding. Because without wisdom, understanding, knowledge and truth, we are stuck in the dark ages. And those were dark times when we had no Messiah. So from our house to yours, may Abba smile greatly on each and every one of you this day. Shalom.